Tensions between India and Pakistan are always fairly high, but last week the nuclear-powered neighbours came close to the brink of all-out conflict. Both countries have fired airstrikes at each other since the middle of last month, claiming they were provoked by the other. The situation has calmed now, but the threat of war still remains. CNN's Nick Robertson sat down with Pakistan's military spokesperson to his perspective. How close did the two countries come to war over these incidents last week? We were, uh, I would say, close to the war because uh, when they violated the airspace, undertook an aggression, we went for response. Did handing back the Indian Air Force fighter pilot, did that help ease tensions? No, it is up to India that whether they take that peace gesture and uh, move forward towards de-escalation or continue the agenda that they have. How would you judge India's posture at the moment on the other side of the line of control? Along the line of control, we are eyeballs to eyeballs. So there is presence of troops for decades. But post uh, the Indian aggression and our response, uh, the safeguards have been taken by both sides. Increase in troop numbers on Increase both. because it is natural as part of military planning that uh, when the situation gets hot, there are safeguards. Those safeguards are in place on both sides. In this eyeball to eyeball, high alert situation, how possible is it for things to escalate again? Uh, we feel that now the ball is in the Indian court. Should they decide to escalate more, the situation will go bad. India claims that on Tuesday last week it crossed into your airspace and bombed what it calls essentially a terrorist training camp. Not even a single brick has been found there if there was an infrastructure and not even a single dead body found there. Their claims are false and I believe lately uh, there is an announcement from their side also that they cannot claim any casualty. Is it correct that Pakistan is now going to take action against Jaish e Mohammed, the group that claimed responsibility for that attack in India uh, two and a half weeks ago that precipitated the current tension? First of all, that claim has not been made from within Pakistan because Jaish e Mohammed does not exist in Pakistan. It has been prescribed by the United uh, Nations also and Pakistan also. Secondly, we are not doing anything under anybody's pressure. So d does this mean in light of what's happened, without international pressure, but in light of what's happened over the past few weeks, that um, an increased effort will take place to root out any groups that might destabilize the situation in Kashmir? For sure. Anybody who operates from Pakistan, is, we feel that it is not in the interest of Pakistan. Instead of blaming Pakistan, it is time that the world should assist Pakistan, facilitate Pakistan in getting rid of uh, such organizations. In your opinion, why did that attack in the middle of February against Indian forces happen that triggered all this tension? The answer to this question lies in the United Nations Human Rights Commission report issued lately. If you suppress the local population to the extent that they are being killed, they are being raped, they are being uh, given pellet guns, so there is a natural reaction. This is what you're saying that Indian forces are doing? Yes, the Indian stuff. occupation forces and this is not that I am saying. It is there in the United Nations Human Rights Commission report. So the world has to see that what is forcing the Kashmiri youth to go towards violence. So instead of looking towards a framed allegation for this incident, India also has to look inward that why these incidents are happening. We have to move towards resolution of Kashmir because this issue, Kashmir, is a flashpoint for the peace in the region. CNN's Nick Robertson there with an interview with Pakistan's military spokesperson.